and the, the biggest challenge that I find in my work is trying to know what I should do every day. So I think whether we're board members or managers, somehow we have to focus on what the most important things are. And so I've tried to create this equation and to see if we can simplify it down to the most important things. So what we do times how we do it equals business success and all of that is the change we make in society. So if we sort of break that down and look at the, the end statement or the change, in my mind, we all have great end statements. And really our challenge isn't to like tweak our end statements. The challenge is to make it come true. So I would say in terms of things to focus on, we don't need to spend a lot of time there. And so backing up in the equation, we have what's the financial results of the business. And we've talked a lot about today about the strain on the financial results. And so I think it's super important that all of us board managers know what our financial plan is over a multi-year period of time. And I think we can do that by reducing it to just a few factors, which I've suggested here being sales growth, growth margin, and how much we want to pay our employees. And one way to look at this is to say, part of our mission is to pay our staff more. So let's plug in a number for that every year. And the financial reality and the market opportunity is telling us we need to operate our businesses more efficiently at a lower gross margin. So if we say in five years, we're going to be operating at this amount of reduced gross margin. And Kroger did this. Kroger reduced their gross margin from 27% to 20% over a multi-year period, which is a fabulous accomplishment. And I imagine that they did that because they had a plan to go about doing that. And I think, I don't know what the right number is, but I think we need to plug in that number three or five years, knowing that we're going to have to be able to do that. And I think we solved that equation for sales growth because a certain amount of sales growth will allow us both to pay our staff more and to operate at a lower gross margin. So the question then becomes, how do we meet that sales growth goal? And that gets back to what we do and how we do it. And I think we have a phenomenal unrecognized advantage in the market, and that is that we have the best small grocery stores in the country. And other stores talk about, oh, this is their small store format, but what they're really talking about is medium-sized stores, just because they're smaller than the big stores. But in our store size, 5,000 to 12,000 square feet, I think we have fabulously successful stores in any measure, impact sales per square feet. And so I think if our stores are within that size, we don't even have to think about that anymore. And I would also urge us, to think carefully about opening stores way smaller than that or way bigger than that. So if we have a great advantage in this sort of store model that no one else has today, it really becomes how we operate those stores. And Nate came up with what I thought a fabulous description of what we do when we do it well, which is the convergence of product and community. And I think historically, when we were successful in both of those areas, we were doing great. And I think the problem today is that we have a big challenge on the product side. And that sometimes people are defecting it to, to, their, to our competitors because they've matched us and in some instances exceeded us. And so I really think that if we drill it down to what are the couple of product things we have to do, and cut what are the couple of community things we have to do and make sure that whatever those are, we have people every day that are waking up and that's their top priority to do it. And I think the community one is going to be a little bit easier because we have lots of great examples of things we already do much better. And I think some of that is just getting a little bit more focus for our co-op in particular. What are those three things that we do? And we've mentioned them all today. And I think the only thing to think about today is that when we think about education, for example, 
it's basically Im impossible to educate people about anything today just with information. Because there's way too much information, there's greenwash, and nobody knows what to believe. So we have to educate people through experience. And we're positioned as small stores to do that, because we have um, personal connections with people, emotional connections. We can invite people in the store, we can have events, we can do all kind of things where we have that connection, which is much different than reading something on the internet. So try and think of what those things are and make sure that we have people who are devoted to doing those things. Not devoted to doing traditional marketing or education or things like that, but those things where we're touching people and developing that sense of community. And then on the product side, I think that the starting point is for us to have better products, we have to have fewer products. Because we spend so much time managing the products ordering them, trying to fit them on the shelf, moving them to the back room because there's not enough room on the shelf, putting them on sale, changing the price, changing the price back, and that we have small stores and we're never going to have the broadest product selection. What we need to do is have the best product selection. Just like Bobby said, you need to find out for our store where we're going to be the best. And <coughs> at Weaver Street, we have the best bread, baked goods in our town. I think now we have the best food bars in our town. We don't have the best sandwiches in our town. You know, we need to devote someone time and energy because it's very difficult to do these things. It's not the kind of thing. These product things don't happen from opening the UNFI catalog and ordering the product. You know, for us to really have the best, we need to decide what it is. And like, you know, John, one of our board member bakers here, I mean, we have people that put unbelievably amount of effort in developing any new product that we make and the time that goes into it and the investment that goes into it. And that's an organizational investment to make that happen, it, to free up the time and space to do that. You know, we import olive oil directly from Greece. That gives us the best product and the best price. You know, not everybody can do that, but you can find the thing for your town. When you think about Trader Joe's, for example, people really like certain products that Trader Joe's has, and they say, wow, I got this, and it's so good because of that. And so I think that's the kind of things that we want to be um, thinking about. And those things only happen because those products have champions. You know, th those products, people feel so strongly about how good those products are and they make it happen, and then the rest of the organization comes along, I think sort of naturally, when you have those kind of champions. And so this is the product that I'm advocating <laughs> today. This wine comes from a uh, co-op in Argentina, and uh, it exists now in the U.S. under this label, but it's very difficult. It's a Malbec wine from Argentina, the name of the co-op is La Riojana. And uh, we at uh, Weaver Street are gonna start importing this wine uh, this summer and gonna try and make it available to all the co-ops in the country. And the traditional wine import chain, there's a 30% gross margin at the import level and there's a 30% gross margin at the retail level. If you add that to this cost of this wine, it comes to $9.99. And we're going to be able to sell it for $6.99 because we're going we're to use a supply chain, a co-op to co-op supply chain, and squeeze that middle margin. And so we're going to have a $2 a case premium that goes to the co-op in Argentina to use for their community projects. The co-op, our co-ops, are going to make a higher margin. And the consumer is going to get a great wine for a third less per bottle. And so to me, that's like the perfect product. It's like a win, win, win product. So I bought a bottle for each of the co-ops in North Carolina, who I'm sure we can distribute to you because we're within the states. You know, I can't speak to the other states, but you're welcome to take it and we can, uh, we can work on that. But I think, you know, the, the key is, is that we have someone 
in our in our co-op that does this you know that's passionate about that and went out and, de and developed this relationship invited the people to come visit us and it, it's all just happenstance after that in a way but you know when we get back to the equation if we want to have the societal result we need the financial result the key thing I think to the financial result is the sales growth we have a fabulous base in this sort of small store model and it all comes down to how we are implementing it how we are expressing our advantage through community and through the products that we sell so pick up your bottle of wine on the way out